So, it's Friday evening. Tonight I wanted to share uh, quickly a paper that is slightly outside of uh, the usual suspects, but I found really cool. This paper called Role Play with Large Language Model. It was published in Nature just last week. And the author, it's really funny because uh, one of them is, is, the, is Murray Shanahan at DeepMind, you know, the large-scale organization that basically invented AI somehow with OpenAI in Cambodia. And the other two, Kyle McDonald and uh, Laria Reynolds, they are both at Elutor AI. So very different, like decentralized collective of hacker, now a non-profit, but I found really cool that these two worlds collaborate and work together. So what does the paper talk about? It talks about how can we think about LLM? How can we think about large language model? And what's the problem? Well, the problem is we use words like understand, know, think, all these words are very loaded by the psychology of human. But human learn language very differently. We are in this embodied world, talking with family, while large language models, they learn by predicting the most plausible next token in a very large corpus that covers the whole internet. And so how can we talk about large language models without falling in this anthropomorphism, or without you know, using these words that basically just don't mean the same thing that they mean for human. Uh, and so what the paper says is that we, sh we should see models as role player. And how does it work? When, when you interact with ChatGPT, when you interact with, and even with a pre-trained model, which is actually maybe more what these papers are is about, um, you have a prompt, you have a beginning of a dialogue, basically, where there is kind of an interaction between two users, and then you ask a question. And the model will try to predict the most plausible continuation. That means the next word, given all this interaction. In all this interaction, they kind of define, they kind of define a role. You know, they define someone, basically a character who would fit the description of the preamble and might say the sort of things that were said before. And the model will try to role play this character as well as it can, as portrayed in the prompt. And where does the model find these roles, this role play that plays? It finds them in a training data set. Because in a training data set, you have like novels, you have screenplays, you have biographies, you have interviews, you have newspapers, you have a whole vast repositories, repertoire of archetypes, of narrative structures with love triangle, with rogue AI, with gentle AI. Um, and all of these define roles and the model will try to find the most relevant one that might have said what was said in the beginning and continue as this role might continue. And a good way to think about that is actually not to think about that as a single role, but to think about that as a superposition of role, a bit like a quantum superposition, you know? And there is a very nice example that they show, which is the game of the 20 question. You know, this game where you have to select, well, actually in this case, that would be the model have to select an object, and then you will ask yes or no answer, and the model will answer yes or no, and you know, this will go through several questions until you reach the object. In many interface, that you use to interact with this model, you can remind and you can regenerate answers, right? And you can have different answers, then you can go to a different object. And that would not have any sense if actually you were, you know, model was doing as us, which was selecting an object and can committing to it. Uh, but what actually the model is doing is every time it's generating a new answer that's coherent with all the previous answers, okay? And that's basically define more and more the role. So it starts with every object being basically possible, and then they will become, as you go through the dialogue, less and less objects, you know, until you have to find one. And that's really how you can see these models. And that's explained a lot of things also that we see. So when you jailbreak a model, you know, when you make it, you know, say things that it's not supposed to say, it's not like you're reaching the real nature of the model as some people are saying it's more like you're just moving to another role, basically. And it's roll all the way down, it's role play all the way down, just like turtles. So it might seem obvious to people who are using LLM, but I think it's not something that's really in the mainstream uh, discussion enough. And that's really one way we should teach, you know, to young generation or to people who are joining AI. I think that's one way we could teach AI, you know, as, as a full role play, total role play uh, agent. 
It also doesn't mean that it's very uh, safe because obviously when the model interacts with objects and with you know uh, the real world, if it's playing the, the bad role, you don't you don't want to have that, right? So doesn't doesn't really change, I would say, uh, ethical question, but it changes a lot of things around anthropomorphism and self-preservation or self-awareness because all of these are basically just the model, you know, answering as the role in a training data set are. And these roles are just human. A human wants self-preservation. You want they are self-aware. And uh, some human can lie. And that's fake news. So all of this can help us, I think, understand a little bit better, you know, or at least talk about this model a little bit better.